Okay, so today I am going to cover the Gecko plugin for Grasshopper, which links Grasshopper and Rhino geometry to the Ecotect environmental analysis software. And uh, the strength of this tool is really to start getting more precise analysis. How this plugin works is it literally starts to communicate directly with Ecotect and passing information back and forth between Rhino and Grasshopper. So the first thing you need to do is uh, install the plugin. And this plugin works just like every other plugin in Grasshopper. You basically have to download it from the website. You can go on Food for Rhino. Once you download it, you can put the files in the zip folder into your components folder. So here I have the folder here, and it has two files um, that make the plugin work. Once you download Gecko, you'll see its components in the extra tab in Grasshopper. And this is all of the Gecko components organized here. Once you get the plugin, the second thing you will need is a working copy of Ecotech. So I have Ecotech Analysis 2011 installed here. I think it works with most recent versions. Okay, so you actually never have to start or run or do anything with Ecotech, which is kind of like the best part about Gecko is that you can use all of the tools and analysis that Ecotech offers, but you never have to use its interface. Um, one of the benefits is Ecotech will always be running and will be getting results, but everything will be handled from within the Grasshopper interface. So we'll send things and we'll get information back and we'll visualize things directly within Grasshopper. So to get started, um, the first thing we need to do is link our Grasshopper session with uh, Ecotech. So before you do anything, you need to create this eco link. So this is the top right node in Grasshopper. And you just place that on the canvas. And eco link um, works just like all of the Gecko nodes. Um, it's important to understand that each one of these nodes has a piece of built-in uh, code, which will actually do things to the Ecotech software. You either launch the software, close it down, or send information, or send scripts to automate different parts of the Ecotech software. So each of these nodes for Gecko has one of these E inputs, which is the execute input. And this will read a Boolean toggle. When it's false, nothing happens. Or in this case, it'll close Ecotech. When it's true, it'll execute whatever command. And it's really important because some of these analyses take some time uh, to manage when these things execute because you don't want, like every time you change a slider, all of the analysis to restart again. So let's see how this works uh, when we start chaining together different analyses. But typically, uh, each node will have an execute input, and a lot of them have a completion output. So when one node starts, it does this process. All of Grasshopper kind of pauses while that happens. When it's over, it will send a true statement to that completion output. And then you, that, that way, you can start chaining together all of these nodes. So when one completes, the other one can start. Okay. Uh, so we'll see that later, but it already exists sort of in this uh, basic uh, ecolink. So to make this work, all we have to do is create a Boolean toggle, which you can get in the parameters. Uh, it's this switch here, or just type in toggle. So the Boolean toggle is just a very simple input. It basically has this true false, which you can change just by double clicking. So defaults to false, so keep that false and plug it into the E. Nothing happens yet because it's false. Um, and just to see what's going on, uh, to get some kind of feedback, we can make a panel and just plug the output into the panel. A lot, most uh, Gecko nodes have this out output, which will tell you what's going on with the node. It's basically like a standard out from a piece of code. Um, so if we plug that in, it says Ecotech uh, is installed on in your computer. So it's already checked if Ecotech's there and it's installed. Now if we click, a double click on the toggle to true, you see it will actually launch Ecotech automatically. So Ecotech is now running. Again, you don't have to do anything in here. You can just minimize it. But Ecotech will be running and visible on your computer. And in the output now, you can see that the connectivity test was successful. And this Ecolink serves to bind together your session of Grasshopper with Ecotech. And it also gives you feedback about whether everything is going OK with the, with the connection. And now if you uh, double click again to false, um, it should actually close Ecotech. OK, see now there, um, it's closed the session. OK, 
So now that the link has been established, we can just minimize Ecotech. It can hang out there waiting for us to do the next thing. And the first analysis I'm going to do is a um, shadow study, which is similar to what we did before, but this time all of the information about the sun position will come from Ecotech. Okay, so to do the sun study, first we're going to make a uh, sun path. So there's a tool in Gecko called Eco Sun Path. We'll click on that, drag it out. Let's move this eco link off to the side so it's out of the way. Um, so this is a typical uh, Gecko node. It has um, an execute input, like I was saying before. It has a completion. Uh, it's the D is the output, and it's basically done. It means that whatever it was doing is completed. OK, so the first thing we'll do is like before, we'll create a uh, Boolean toggle and keep that a false and plug it into the sun path. So this will um, dictate when the sun path is triggered to be created from Ecotech. So we'll keep that false for now as we set it up. Um, the next two parameters are the day and month inputs for the node. So I'm going to make a series of sliders just like before to specify the, the day and month of the year. And uh, there's a shortcut for specifying a range in an input slider. If you start typing, if we want a slider for the day to go from 1 to 31 with integers, you can type in 1 and then the less than symbol. And then type in the number you actually want on the slider, uh, 15 for the day, less than again, and then 31. That's the maximum we want on our slider. Hit enter. And it'll actually create a slider that goes from 1 to 31. And because we never used any decimals, it'll default to an integer slider, which is what we want. We'll plug that into day. We'll do the same thing for month. We'll basically go from 1, say 2, to 12, and plug that into the month. Uh, the next input is the weather data. So this is um, one advantage of, eco of using Gecko is that it uses standard weather data files, which are also used by Ecotech. And this will give you precise information, not just about your location, but also about weather data, wind velocities, um, things like that. So to load in a weather data file, uh, we can use this tool in Gecko called Eco Weather File. So just drop that in. This is basically a, a file reader node, something special. We'll connect that into the weather, uh, into the W input. And then to specify the file, we can just double click it and it'll open a standard uh, Windows um, Explorer window. And we need to locate the weather file. And these come um, with uh, Ecotext. So you just have to find where Ecotext is installed in your computer. And usually it's in program files. If you're on 64, it'll be in the 32-bit folder um, under Autodesk, Ecotext Analysis, and then Weather Data. And there's a few standard files for different major cities in the world. Uh, and New York is one of them. So you can just select that. So this has read in the um, New York weather file and has specified everything about our position um, directly with that. Uh, and then the last two remaining uh, inputs is the north arrow. So in this case, um, to coordinate between Ecotect and Grasshopper, we need to specify the north arrow at 180 degrees, okay? because by default, zero degrees is facing south. So we'll just make a slider for 180, and we'll place that there. And obviously, if you're working with different project north, you can change this to change um, where your north is in the model. And then the last uh, slider is the scale factor. It goes from 0 to 1 to scale the physical dimensions of the sun path in your model. I'm just going to make a 1.0 slider for now. Um, we can't really see it yet, so we don't know how much to scale it. So we'll just save that for later. Okay, so this is the basic setup of the eco sun path. It's just creating the sun path in your model, so you don't actually have to bring in any of the model geometry yet. It's just going to create all that geometry as a reference for us. So once you have everything plugged in, you can toggle true, and you can see that it creates the sun path in your model. At this point, we can scale it down to something that's uh, more reasonable, and then we can play around with the month and day to see how the sun path changes. So here are some of the outputs of Eco Sun Path. Um, there's a standard out again. It'll just tell you what it sent to Ecotech and what it got in, in return. Um, 
and it actually outputs the different geometry separately into different outputs so we can create geo nodes to capture those different pieces so you can see here if we hide the sun path um, the compass and the path are on different uh, on different streams so we can always hide this and just have the path if that's what we want. Uh, the other output here is the sunrise sunset time. So this will actually give you in hours um, what the sunrise and sunset are for that day of the year. So we can output this to a panel. And this is another advantage of uh, Gecko over Heliotrope is that it actually gives you in hours for our time zone what the actual sunrise and sunset is in military time. So. Um, and that's because, again, it uses these weather files, which already has built in all the information about how far are we from um, the standard day line, how do we do daylight savings, and all this stuff's already built 